Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. If this is your first time here, make sure and hit that subscribe button as well as that bell icon. That way you know when other videos like this are released. So I've had a lot of questions lately about things to pack on motorcycle trips. And I basically pack the same thing on trips, basically from, if I'm saying one night to a 14 day trip, I pretty much pack the same thing. But it really got me thinking because I've had questions about minimalistic packing. And in my mind, I was already packing pretty minimalistic. I've been out riding uh, on my property with the bike loaded down, just kind of testing some things out. And I've really been able to streamline my list of things that I think that I can pack uh, for any length of trip and still be comfortable. So check it out, here it comes. Okay guys, so as I said, your comments have really got me thinking about what I really need on trips. Um, there's a difference between going on a, a, an adventure touring trip where you're doing mostly highway where weight really doesn't matter versus going on, say, uh, the Southern California BDR or other rides like that, that you really want the bike to be as light as possible because the, the terrain in that, on those rides are gonna be pretty technical, like s similar to like the Utah ride. So you want your bike to be as light as possible. So one, it, it's not wearing you out whenever you're out riding that terrain. And two, the bike will perform the way that you want it to without just constantly fighting it all the time. So what I've done the last couple of days is I've, I've loaded up my bike with kind of what I would always carry. And then I come out to my property and I've, I've got all kinds of trails and stuff that I ride out here constantly just to kind of stay fresh with the skills. And so I'll ride it heavy and then I take some things out that I don't necessarily think I need and then I'll ride it some more. And then lately I've kind of packed down to just my two panniers. And now I took these off uh, this morning and I weighed them before I came out and rode. Each one is about 21, 22 pounds. Now, with the bags being empty together, uh, they weigh 13 pounds. So between the two bags, I've got 44 pounds minus your 13 pounds. That's a light weight for, for packing because I used to be somewhere around the 55 pound, 50 to 55 pound weight between the two bags. So now with this kind of streamlined, minimalistic way of packing, I've really saved quite a bit of weight. Now, the only thing that really changes amongst my packing um, from trip to trip is going to be obviously food, because if, if it's a short trip, you're only gonna have a little bit of food. And if you're on a longer trip, you'll have more. Granted, most of the time, you can always go in and shop and get things that you need along the way. So you don't have to carry your entire trip's worth of food on you. But um, I also carry my camera equipment. So um, to make these videos for you guys, I have to bring quite a bit of camera equipment, whether it be my, my drone, my cameras, batteries, all the things, right? So um, I usually put that in this bag here, this Giant Loop uh, Rogue bag. It's super compact. And what I do is I put it up here on top and that really protects everything from, you know, getting smashed if the bike falls over or when the bike falls over, because it will. So that's really the only difference. That bag weighs somewhere around six or seven pounds. Um, but on my short overnight trips, I can usually put it in here, put it on top to where it's protected. And, it, and it's not really, I don't have to carry anything up here, which is pretty nice. So when I pack my bags, what I like to do is I like to make the weight as about as, as even as possible. And I like to make it to where it's kind of organized where I can, I, I can easily grab the things I need when I need them. Generally, what I do is I keep my camping gear on one side and my clothing and toiletries and all that stuff on the other side. There is a little bit of crossover just to balance out the weight, but generally that's how I pack my gear. I usually put my water bottles in the front. Um, I started carrying this Nalgene uh, 48 ounce water bottle. And why the reason I do that is because my, uh, my water filter, not my fuel filter, that'd be weird. My water filter screws right onto this and I can pump it directly in without having to carry any extra equipment. Now, I do carry a 48 ounce one in, in, in each side and that might be a little bit overkill, but the, also the reason that I do that is because when you're making mountain house meals or coffee or whatever else, uh, your, your water usage goes away pretty quickly. And if it's a hot day, you're drinking quite a bit. So this way I have at least a half a gallon or more on me all the time. Moving into this back pocket and I'll lay all this stuff out and I'll go out and show you how I, what, what all is packed into each one. But into this back pocket here, I have um, all of my kitchen equipment, some of my food. Um, again, the very minimalistic version of that that I am gonna try to start carrying. I'm gonna test this out this week. I'm gonna go do a, an overnight ride 
um, out here in North Idaho just to kind of test all this stuff out. Over here on this side, I have my first aid kit, my water filter, um, some toiletries, and then again in this front pocket, I've got my, uh, my other water bottle. Moving into this side, as I said, I've got all my clothing. Now, when it comes to clothing, I really don't carry that, that much clothes. Like, so I, I wear my riding gear, whether it be my jacket, jersey, whatever, underneath uh, my, my jacket. And then in my clothing side, I'll show you everything that I carry when I lay it all out here, but I generally only carry on a long trip, say a four, two week trip, I'm gonna carry three pair of socks, three pair of underwear, and basically one pair, maybe two shirts and one pair of pants of, uh, of camp clothes, we'll call it. Because most of your day is spent riding, and then the second half of the day, you're sitting around the campfire at camp or whatever. And honestly, I don't see anybody when I go out and ride on these uh, long off-road adventure trips that I do because that's the whole point for me is to get away. So I don't really care who I come across, if I come across anybody, and really what they think. So not that I stink all the time because I do shower or, or bathe in creeks and rivers and I have a little uh, shower that I bring with me. But um, that being said, I don't bring that many pa pairs of clothes. I can wear the same change of clothes nearly the entire time. If it's, if it's gonna be a hot environment, maybe I'll bring two shirts, that way I can wash them as I go. Um, but th that's really all I bring. When it comes to pants or shorts, I actually bring a pair of, I think they're either North Face or Columbia, but they're the zip off style to where I have pants if it's cool in the evenings, or if I need to go take a swim, I've got a pair of shorts and they dry extremely fast. So it's a really nice kind of do all pair of, a pair of clothing for the bottom half of your body. I always bring my Takara Tenkara fly rod, pack sounds super small. Very, very lightweight. This is a carbon fiber case. Um, there's hardly any weight to it at all. I'd say it's probably a pound, maybe. But let me just go ahead and lay all this stuff out. Okay, so I have everything laid out here. Um, this, all this stuff in this section came out of this bag and this section came out of the other bag. Now, we'll start with the other bag first. This is kind of my clothing bag. You'll see my tent is also on that side, but again, it's just to kind of balance out the weight. Um, I have my, basically my changes of clothes. I have those pants I was talking to you about a minute ago, my, pairs of, my pair of socks and my t-shirt. And again, that'll change if I'm going from a one night trip to a multi-day trip. I will carry up to three pairs of socks, three pairs of underwear, and I might add another t-shirt, as I said. It really just all depends on the climate. Another thing I might do is, is throw in like a really thin Molina wool, like, um, like long john to sleep in if it's gonna be really cold at night. Cause there's been times where, you know, it's 85 in the day, but you're at elevation. So at night it's in the low forties or high thirties. So sometimes the, the temperature swings can be pretty big. So another thing that I carry quite a bit on my trips, and I know I've mentioned these in the past on other videos, these are made by limbs. They're called the boulder boot. And what's really cool about these is they're they're actually, these pair, this pair of shoes together is lighter than most pairs of flip-flops, um, like designer flip-flops that you'll wear, the thicker, like the schnooks or anything like that. And they're full-on shoes, which is super nice because when it comes down to it, uh, you know, flip-flops are only as good in, until you start getting, you know, thorns in your, fi in your feet or you're sliding off of them when they're wet stuff like that. So these boulder boots, they pack down really small. You can kind of just, you know, fold them up if you had to. Um, and, and they, again, you can fold them and just get them really flat. So they, they're really great. They're super packable. One of my favorite items to bring, especially if I'm going to be somewhere that's, um, you know, if I want to go on a hike or anything like that, once we get to camp, really, really nice pair of shoes to have. Um, and I'll leave it, I'll, I'll leave a uh, link to the description below on these. Speaking of shoes, another thing I carry is uh, water shoes. Again, super lightweight, very, very thin. And they just, they kind of just hang out right here in this little section. That way when they're wet, they're not packing them around or anything like that. They can get dirty in the daytime. Whenever we're riding around, doesn't really matter. They're really cheap. I think we bought these um, at some little store uh, a couple years ago on a trip. And they just, it kind of stuck with me ever since. They. I mean, they're great for fly fishing and everything else that we do uh, on our trips. So lightweight, easy to carry. And again, I'm talking about minimalistic here, but also being comfortable. So some of these things you might look at and say, well, 
minimalistic, you don't need to have that. Well, in my opinion, to be comfortable, that's, this is the things that I want. So just to kind of keep that in mind. Try not to chew me up too much in the comments. Okay, so in, adi in addition to those items, another thing I carry here, uh, as I mentioned, I've got my fly rod, which is up there on my bike. Just some tackle, flies, things like that. This mat is really nice. It's made by Trailmaster. It, uh, it unfolds, it's actually made for changing tires and I do have one for changing tires, but this one's, uh, I, I actually carry a second one just to be able to stand on to change my clothes. That way you don't get you know, grass and dirt and all that junk on your socks whenever you're putting your boots on. Um, it just makes life easy. It goes perfectly right in the doorway of my tent. I have my water pump or my water filter. And again, that screws right on to the Nalgene bottles, which again are in this front pouch here. Screws right on, you can pump it out of any stream, creek, lake, whatever, and you've got fresh water. So you don't have to carry a ton of water on you. I've got my tent. This is a Cabela's XPG two-person ultra lightweight um, hiking tent. I really like this tent because you can see it packs down small. It's only 16 inches wide, so it goes in any pannier. It'll go in hard pannier, soft panniers, any pannier. And I keep the poles separate, and I put a little bit of Gorilla Tape and stuff along the ends, mainly because I'm so afraid that these things are gonna rub and wear a hole in my tent that I just, I keep them separate. So that's, that's the reason I do that. It may never happen, but I don't really wanna take the chance. And this here, I've got some toiletries. I've got my first aid kit baby wipes, stuff like that. And then this is a Sea to Summit pocket shower. It holds 10 liters, super compact, really lightweight. I've got my soap right there, um, but it's again, for as far as the essentials, but still, and still being comfortable, this is a, a great item to have. And again, I'll leave uh, a link to the, in the description below to this. This is an awesome little shower, especially if you're gonna be in camp for a few hours and you have some bright sunlight, it'll, it'll heat the water up fairly fast, at least enough to take the chill off so it doesn't take your breath away whenever you take a shower. To be honest, I've only used this a couple of times, um, mainly because usually there's a, uh, a stream or something like that that's constantly running whenever we camp places and it's really easy just to go and take a, a shower or, or a bath rather in, in that. But if you wanna take a shower, again, this is a really awesome tool. So moving over here to this side, um, you can see that again, this is everything from this side of my panniers. I've got my sleeping bag. This is the Nemo Forte uh, sleeping bag. It's a spoon bag, which is really nice for people like myself who like to sleep on their side. It's kind of normal mummy bag in the shoulders, but then it actually gets wider in the leg area. So, in the, and then a little bit skinnier down in the foot box. Again, I'll do a uh, review on this here really soon because I've had a ton of questions about my sleeping bag since I've done this Nemo Philo uh, reviewed the, the other day. So this, these two items work really good together. This pillow fits right inside the head part of the sleeping bag. So it, it keeps it from sliding around. But uh, again, great sleeping bag, Nemo Forte. And then I have my food. I've got in this for right now, I've got two um, dehydrated meals. I have a mountain house lasagna and then Backpackers Pantry also makes some really good stuff. And this is a Pad Thai. It's actually really, really good if you like that style of food. Um, super filling. It's like 900 calories if you eat the entire thing. Um, and then I also have some breakfast stuff like some oatmeal. Um, some I carry some brown sugar and cinnamon mix in there just to kind of you know, spice it up a little bit. And then um, I got some uh, Starbucks instant coffees, which if you've never had these, these instant coffees are excellent. It's all you do is boil water and say your jet boil or similar and then you've got hot coffee speaking of jet boil um, i'm starting to carry this more and more uh, i carried the mighty mo a lot uh, before but the, the jet boil is super nice just because everything fits inside of it i do carry another um, fuel container over there as an extra but this again everything fits down inside you've got your You've got your uh, burner on the inside there and a stand and check out my video up here in the corner, whatever, wherever, wherever it's at. If you're curious on the jet boil versus the mighty mo. I've got my spoon, long handle spoon, kind of a pet peeve of mine is whenever you open these up and you're trying to dig in there and eat all your food that your knuckles get all messy. So I like the long handle spoon or spork. And then I carry just a collapsible cup and a bowl. 
I've got my, my Joey chair. It's about the same size as my tent, so that's why I carry one on one side and one on the other is to kind of balance the weight out. And then lastly, this is a pretty cool little thing that I picked up recently. Um, when I did my cook set video several weeks ago, a lot of you guys were telling me to get the uh, was it Wolf and Grizzly uh, grills. So when I looked at them, I was kind of shocked on how expensive they were. So I searched for something similar on Amazon and this is what popped up. Now this uh, just simply unscrews. This is one side. All of your other stuff is on the inside. You have a second, a second little uh, piece that goes on. And I'll show you how this works in, in, another, in another video and I'll leave a link in the description below. But I've been really impressed with this. Uh, like I said, I carry a fly rod. So whenever I wanna you know, maybe catch some fish and eat that for dinner instead of, a, instead of a dehydrated meal, having a grill or something to cook it on makes it super convenient. And I think this thing was like $11 on Amazon. And so far after using it a couple times, I'm super impressed with it. I wanna say the Wolf and Grizzly was in the $100 range and it's basically the same thing, some, some differences, but it's a little grill essentially, just like the Wolf and Grizzly is. And for $11, super hard to beat. And this is, I mean, lightweight and very, very compact. So speaking of lightweight, like we've talked about this entire time, one really easy way to cut weight whenever you're doing your long adventures is soft panniers. Hard panniers are great for being organized and for quick grabbing and, and things like that. There, there are a few cons, and I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but uh, as far as really cutting weight, as I said, both of my panniers empty weigh only 13 pounds, whereas one of my hard panniers by itself weighs, I think 14 or 15 pounds. So super easy way to cut weight is by switching to uh, something similar to like this giant loop round the world pannier. Um, you can, again, you can check out one of my videos on that if you're interested in those, but it's just an easy way to cut weight. I love these things, won't go anywhere without them. The only way I would go back to using a hard pannier is if I'm strictly gonna do highway and I maybe I'm gonna be riding two up or something where I wanna pack a lot of gear and uh, you know have it easily accessible. But even at the same time, these things are 90 liters. You can pack all kinds of stuff in there if you really want to. So yeah, that's my little two cents on that. All right, guys, once again, thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is kind of my new minimalistic camping set. I'm gonna be trying it out this week. Um, I'm gonna be going out and probably doing a, at least a one-nighter, uh, probably midweek. It's supposed to be, we're supposed to have some awesome weather, 80, 90 degree weather this week. So uh, for here in North Idaho, being almost June, it's about time because usually we have this weather a lot earlier in the season, but for some reason we've had a long, uh, long, very, cool spring so I'm excited about getting out on that but again i'll try this whole setup out in real life uh and let you know how it, how it goes and you can check me out on instagram or whatever there and you can see some photos from that uh, from that trip i'll also probably post a video of that trip in the coming weeks uh with a review of this sleeping bag as well as just the ride itself and the scenery the area i'm going is gorgeous uh got some really awesome details about it that uh, you can't find hardly anywhere else in the country. So I'll, I'll definitely be making a video on that and showing you. But anyway, once again, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as well as that bell icon. That way you know when new videos like this are released. If you haven't yet, make sure and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. And we'll see you next time.